racing now. I wish I win from last. A spectacular TJ win. Giga kick, giga kick down the outside wins the Everest. Shinzo and Ryan Moore have drawn clear to win the Golden Slipper. With Tim Gilbert and Julie Snook, this is Racing Dreams. Oh, don't you love a little bit of group one racing, Rose Hill Gardens, the sun is shining, Julie. Good morning, Timmy, good morning to you at home. A little bit overcast today, I think I got overexcited earlier and I thought the sun had really popped out, but a bit overcast today, but the weather has stopped raining, so that's good, that's a good start. We've got a big day of racing ahead and of course, we've got a big show. Absolutely. Uh, we catch up with Tom Magnier from Coolmore Studs ahead of Storm Boys Run in today's Golden Rose. Yeah, what a crack field that is. Steffi Magnetica books her place in the Everest. We chat to happy trainer Bjorn Baker. And Darrowfield's star filly Autumn Glow goes three in a row. And speaking of happy, John Massara couldn't be happier. Can't blame him, really. Autumn Glow, what a horse. Yeah. Now, Warwick Farm trainer Bjorn Baker has a runner in this year's Everest and he's confident Steffi Magnetica could conquer the world's richest race on mm -hmm. turf. That is right. The winner of the Stradbroke runs in the Newgate and GPI slot. I sat down with Bjorn a couple of days ago. Well, Bjorn, congratulations. You've got a runner in the Everest. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, it's very uh, exciting. Uh, a little bit of pressure, but um, I'm confident we can get, get her there in great order. It was a fantastic run on the shorts. Uh, she's a mare that always puts 100% in, and I think she can handle any track condition. So I think four weeks between runs will be ideal. It's very exciting. At what stage did you think this is an Everest contender? I thought even after the Doom and 10,000, she was probably a little bit unlucky in that in the winter, and then she went on to win the Stradbroke. So I thought after that, she, she'd won the right race. The Stradbroke winner, of course, won the Everest last year. Um, and I thought as long as we race well, as well as I thought she would first up, and I was very confident on Saturday, she'd probably just about force her way into the race. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to show something from... Uh, that the horse is going good, that that Stradbroke win wasn't a fluke, and, and she definitely showed that. So, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm there, to, and the owners are likewise, and the connections, Newgate and GPI, we're all there, thinking we quite possibly have the right horse. We're, we want to be at the pointy end of the race on October the nineteenth. Looking at the splits at Randwick last week, she had the fastest last six hundred at thirty two sixty six. She's got an incredible turn of foot. She really does have an, an amazing turn of foot and um, even that she probably just got hindered for a stride or two. So I think even the 1200 is going to be slightly better for her too. She may be able to be that touch closer, especially if she did draw a gate. Uh, she gets on really well with Zach Lloyd. He tends to ride her very smooth um, because she can be sort of overdo it. But you get into a race like the Everest, there's going to be genuine pace regardless. And no, I, I'm very excited about it. Zach will be able to sit on her. He's based at Warwick Farm, so he, he'll definitely get to sit on her a number of times before uh, the race. And um, no, it's, it's great to be in the race with a month between runs and, and we'll be able to set her perfectly. So what is her plan from here? She'll have an easy trial and we've just got to confirm the dates, even possibly the 4th of October next week. Um, and we'll probably give her a day out at the beach and possibly even take her to the races on, on Premier Day. Just give her that race day experience and often that can help just be relaxed. You get to Everest Day, it is going to be a, a, a big crowd, a really big atmosphere. So we just want her to probably go to the races feeling good about herself and, and ready to run the race of her life. Well, interestingly, a mare or a filly is yet to place in the Everest and already this year we've got three in the field. So it's shaping up to be a different race and it has a very different style of field this year. Yeah, I, I guess it looks very even um, at this stage and um, I, I think the, the mares have probably been underutilised but you've only got to look at Winks, Black Caviar, Sunline, Maccabi Diva, uh, I'm pretty confident. I look at the Olympics, New Zealand and Australia. Uh, Mears are probably the dominant sex. Actually, quote me on that. Overpass, are you still looking for a slot? Most definitely, um, but if he doesn't make a slot, the Sydney Stakes is a great race for him. He's definitely better fresh. His uh, form in the last two years has been phenomenal. He's been very lightly raced, and he's only six. 
even I forget how young he is. He definitely has the best yet to come, and I'm thinking possibly it could be this spring into summer. Um, and if we get a good track, on, and regardless what track, he's going to run a big race and whatever race he is on in on Everest Day. had those conversations have you been approached not as yet it's all been a little bit quiet there's still plenty of water to go under the bridge but it definitely adds a whole nother element and scott darby will manage that he's had uh, overpass there before i think he had she will reign in the first um everest and of course we've had a lot of luck in, in the other slot race the quokka and perth together so um he'll know what's best in terms of his ownership and, um, and overpass his ownership and uh anyway if he gets in it'll be great remember the everest was first climbed by a great new Zealander called Sir Edmund Hillary so it would be nice for another little battling Kiwi to climb this summer Well he's run some marathons hasn't he ran a marathon the other day old Bjorn? Yeah he goes alright he is mm. one of the great characters of the game but it is very exciting Steffi Magnetica uh, in the Everest, could there be a second from the Bjorn Baker stable we will find out in due course. Absolutely. Well the Sydney Everest Carnival rolls out to Rose Hill Gardens for Golden Rose Day today with an exciting day highlighted by the Group 1 uh, race for three year olds of course. One man who knows the importance of this race is trainer Anthony Cummings. Anthony, we welcome you from your Ramwick Stables. It's a, it's a huge race, isn't it? It's a, it's a real stallion-making race as well, the Golden Rose. Yeah, it's a very important uh, race in a, in a potential stallion's career. Um, James, you've got a couple of uh, runners there, and he's had a bit of luck in the race, so hopefully that continues for the family. Well, speaking of James, 10 years ago, he trained his first Group 1 winner, in partnership with Bart. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's been a bit of a family affair. I've, I've had a bit of luck in the race as well, uh, as you say, James and and Dad, whatever. And now uh, James, you know, has continued on in the same vein. So uh, it is a valuable race. It is a race that makes a difference, you know, in their career and uh, creates value uh, for them as a standing going forward. Yeah, and of course he does have the two today. He got, he's got the two. Favourites uh, just ahead of Storm Boy. But let's go back to when uh, you had success in it. We don't have to go back too far. 2008. Um, mm. Tell us about that win. Uh, it was pretty exciting. Uh, you know, it was a, a new race on the, on the scene at that point. I'd run second in the first uh, uh, iteration of it. Uh, and then to come through and, and see G4th do his thing uh, was pretty exciting. Uh, he went on and was a, a useful stallion after. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was probably the... the a pretty good result. And obviously this win was in partnership with Queensland breeders Peter and Wendy Moran as well. What do you make mm. of, you know, that field back then? And when you're looking at the field we've got today, it is just incredible. There's superstars everywhere. Yeah, I, I think the, the race really has grown uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's uh, de developed its own reputation in a very short time. Uh, the, uh, it was a, a change uh, from the Peter Pan, I think it, it, it was developed from that race. Uh, I actually won the last version of that with a filly called On Air that went on to win the Oaks. So anyway, it's uh, Golden Rose, uh, a, a very much a stallion making race, very much uh, an important race in a three-year-old's career uh, and honestly in a trainer's career. I mean, like, if you can sort of show yourself that you're capable of producing horses on the day to perform at a level that, that's required, I mean, that's a, a great Philip, uh, you know, feather in your cap. I was very impressed by El Costello last week. Tell us about it. Oh, pretty exciting horse too. Uh, thought about him for the Golden Rose, but I think you know he's best at uh, at that level, sort of 1600 and beyond. Uh, so he won over a mile at Randwick last week uh, against the older horses, and that's really very much a uh, you know a, a benchmark for classic three-year-olds. You need to be able to do that. Uh, he goes to the gloaming in a couple of weeks' time, uh, and he'll be well placed there. And hard to beat and, and the aim for at least in Sydney for this preparation is to go to the champion stakes and he'll be at his best that day. And how is Tri-State? He's up and racing well at the moment? He has been. Drew badly today so we've taken him out but uh, he's very uh, susceptible to um, you know bad gates. You know he just we've done it too many times he's an old guy he's been around a bit uh, we know the right formula uh, and when we get something close to that we go uh, but today there are four maybe five horses drawn inside him that we're going to give him grief so we uh the discretion the better part of valor uh we'll wait a couple of weeks for another day
They're hoping the track will get to a soft seven today. Do you think it will? Uh, I think so. Uh, the weather's sort of cleared here at Randwick, at least, and it doesn't seem to be too much on the radar, so I'd imagine the track will improve through the day. And before we let you go, you've still got a couple with uh, Jerry Harvey. How's Jerry going? Who's he looking forward to this spring? <laughs> Uh, he's, uh, he's always interested. Uh, you know, there's a lot of horses around, and, and I think it's as important for him as anyone to see something win. Uh, so we had a horse uh, a trial for him uh, through the week, and, and it's put its hand up to be a nice horse, Strand Beauty. Uh, he'll probably have his first up run the, uh, next Wednesday, uh, and uh, he'll be a bit of a highlight horse for us going through into the spring. What about Caesar's Palace? Caesar's Palace, uh, he's on the sideline. He, um, his last run, he uh, just had a, a bit of a strain in the back of his knee. So, um, once again, just uh, he's a pretty nice horse, done a really good job for the stable. Uh, and uh, we had hoped to have him for the big dance this year, but uh, it'll have to be next year, I'd say. Oh, there's so many races around this time of year now, isn't there, Anthony? Um, another one of Jerry's that I like, oh, particularly are. like the name of, is Ex-Wife. Oh, this is very clever, naming this one. <laughs> It was very clever. Um, so it's um, uh, it's a funny name for a gelding, uh, but in, in any event, it seems to be uh, apt given the pedigree. So, uh, but a nice horse, and uh, he's been accepted with a few times. He drew the outside um, in the provincials, uh, which he's going to race today. But uh, he'll be running next week, and, uh, and certainly not far off a win. Oh, we'll look out for that one. Finally, uh, who are you tipping? You're tipping one of James's broadsiding or uh, Traffic Warden. Well, he doesn't let much go, James. I mean, uh, the, uh, there's always a reason for or against, you know, each one. But uh, Broadsiding was the leading two-year-old last year, first up this year, and he looked very impressive in his gala last week. Uh, as good as Tom Warden was in his win, I, I've got to say I'd go for uh, the number one saddle cloth. Does uh, Dad give James a call and say, hey, mate, just a little bit of advice? This is how you get this one done? <laughs> <laughs> well... As advice comes from all, from all corners, don't worry. You're never short of it. <laughs> Especially in the Cummings family. Anthony Cummings, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time Absolutely. to chat today. No pleasure. Have a good Thank day. You. Thanks, mate. I always wonder what Christmas or Easter would be like in a family like that. Yeah, it'd be a lot of talk lot of, of chat. Uh, horses. Absolutely. <laughs> well, of course, we've had a little bit of rain late in the week here in Sydney, which has certainly softened the track at Rose Hill today. It was a heavy eight this morning, uh, but with the sun starting to poke through, they are hoping to get into that soft range. Yeah, I spoke to a few people yesterday. They're sort of hoping that it might get mm. into that soft seven range, which should be perfect. The track does look pretty as a picture. I caught up with track manager Sean Patterson for Racing Dreams. Oh, nothing like the golden west blue sky. Beautiful here at Rose Hill Gardens. And I'm joined by Sean Patterson, the track manager. Sean, golden rose. Magical race day. It is. It's one of the pinnacles for us. Uh, first group one for Rose Hill of this uh, carnival. And look, we're really looking forward to it. So do you head to the grand final now, don't you, for the spring? Yeah, look, it's, it's that, that pinnacle race, as I say, in three-year-olds, over 1400 million dollars in price money in the first group one. So, look, really looking forward to it. Everything's setting up to be a, a real good one, uh, one for the ages, you could almost say. And when I talk of that grand final, these days the Golden Eagle is the grand final, a $10 million four-year-old race. Yeah, look, there's so many good races now in Sydney that you know, build our spring up. Uh, made our spring equivalent to what we would look at in autumn. So, look, it keeps going from strength to strength, um, and this is the first one for us, but a uh, real big spring ahead. Yeah, and looking at the track, it looks spectacular. You've had the weather on your side? Yeah, look, seeing that little bit of early spring has been really helpful for us. Um, had a pretty wet uh, winter, cold winter, so to get to the spring and see that, that recovery and that growth in the, the tracks uh, is really important. But look, um, everything's good to go. We're looking at that more of that spring weather, nice moisture in tracks, and um, looking for a real good day. Obviously the focus, particularly when I was growing up at Rose Hill Gardens, was the autumn and the golden slipper, still is in so many ways. How do you compare the two um, carnivals now? Yeah, look, it's really tricky for a truck manager. Um, we base everything on weather conditions and where we're at. So, look, it's amazing. Um, obviously, the you go to the Golden Slipper and it's something of its own. Um, it's one of those races that it's always going to be historically 
important and it's going to be massive for us. But um, look, now we've got the Golden Eagle and we've got a really good spring campaign. So it's it's amazing what Sydney Racing is doing and it keeps on going strength to strength. Rose Hill Gardens, what does it mean to you? It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it means everything to me. Um, I started here as an apprentice 18 years ago now. So to be able to go through the journey and see where it's developed and see what racing's been doing, um, it's, it's a privilege. And um, look, go strength to strength and keep going. And you got a good crew? Yeah, we've got the best crew. They are really passionate about what they do and that's what it means. You know, racing is a difficult industry to be in. It's long hours, long days, um, but we do it because we're passionate about it and we turn up every day and we make sure we do the best job possible. Okay, here's your final pitch. Why should people come out and enjoy their time at Rose Hill Gardens? Look, we just keep on going forward, forward. Um, from the events to what we offer on race days to the type of racing, you know, I said the, the strengths of the racing industry goes from leaps and bounds. So to get out, have a good day with your mates or your family and uh, enjoy the races, it's number one. Okie dokie. Now Julie is back with some news from around the tracks and Kieran Ma had a big night at the Valley. What a Ooh, night. Oh, a sensational run by Southport Tycoon launching home to win the Group 1 Manicato Stakes last night ahead of stablemate Growing Empire. I think we'll have a chat to Shano about this one later in the show. Uh, Everest contender I Wish I Win finished well in third. That is not last night's race, but we will have a look at last night's race a little later in the program. Timmy? Yeah, absolutely. He was happy with that run. Uh, I wish I would. Oh, Pete Moody was very happy yeah, with that one. Yeah, he was. Now, speaking of um, some Everest contenders, mm. uh, we've had quite a bit of movement during the week. Finally, at last. Mm. Kieran Ma now has two runners in this year's Everest after it was announced I Am Me will run in the Star and Arrowfield slot, a deserving slot indeed. It's a little surprise given the Mayor has won Two of the major sprints here in Sydney this spring in the Concord and the Shorts. Uh, now, he alluded to it on the show last week, but confirmation Jolie Starr will run in the Chris Waller slot for this year's Everest. It comes off that incredible win in the show county last month, and I think we're going to have a look at it now. Uh, and a gutsy third in the Scirocco there. There she is coming down on the outside. The mare will trial on October 8 and head straight into the Everest. Chris saying both of her last two first-up runs were fantastic. So the team feels she is best to go to the Everest fresh. That very easy win across the line there and a well-deserved pat as well. All right, meantime, the Bjorn Baker trained Steffi Magnetica runs for Newgate and GPI. She becomes the third mayor in the race. Interestingly, a mayor of is yet to place in the $20 million Everest. So this could be the year the tables turn. To date, we now have five contenders. Actually, that may have changed. We may be up to six now, including... Let's have a look at this. We have Bella Nipatina, who will be running for Tab on the full screen there. I wish I win for Trackside Media and bustling for Neil Werrett and Max Whitby as well. If we take a look at the second page, I am me for the star and arrow field. So still a little bit of movement to go with just a few weeks. 21 sleeps, 20 sleeps. Yeah, Paris. and there's pretty much almost seven, isn't it? Sunshine in Paris with uh, John Camilleri will we'll definitely start and she's the one I really like. Yeah. Now, a couple of star sprinters trialled this week. Yeah, the reigning Everest champ, think about it, had his second trial earlier this week. Now, the Golding will make his spring return Turn the premier on October 5. Still hasn't been named in the Everest. Um, so that will be just two weeks out from the Everest. That's him here in the red cap. Here's jockey Jason Collett after that trial. Jason Collett, think about it. What do you think, mate? Yeah, very happy. Uh, he's sick and trial. More comfortable today, not as fresh. Had a nice head out. Uh, they'll bring him on and, yeah, he's pretty, pretty happy with him going into the premier. Yeah, trainer Joe Pride is confident that we will see, think about it, in this year's Everest. That has been the target the entire season. Meantime, 2022 champ Giga Kick also had a barrier trial on Tuesday after finishing in the Concord. If you cast your eye just to the back of the field in the white and the red silks there, the chestnut coming up with the blaze on the outside, finishes strongly. Trainer Clayton Douglas was very happy with Tuesday's run, saying he'll be ready for the premiere Next week, and then only two weeks into the Everest, jockey James McDonald also rather impressed.
James McDonald is the former Everest champ back giga kick. Yeah, absolutely. He was, um, he was superb this morning. He's obviously improving all the time with fitness, and that's one of the biggest key. Obviously, he's coming off a long layoff, but he feels really good. He's executing beautifully, so he's well on track for um, 13 days' time, and I'm sure he'll run through. And of course, another big day for James at Rose Hill with eight rides today, including the favourite Gatsby's in the Heritage and Star Godolphin Colt broadsiding in the Golden Rose. So still a lot of water under the bridge, Timmy, for this Everest. Will we see the reigning champs in there? Will we not? Is it going to be a new field? Who's well, we're going to talk to James Heron shortly. Yeah. We went with Giga Kitten 1. Will he go again? Now, He's often got the magic touch, that man. Yeah, absolutely. Now, often when something really good is expected of an athlete at doesn't quite deliver. But that is certainly not the case for three-year-old filly Autumn Glow. She is a star, and I caught up with John Massara after her great run in the T-Rose. It's Autumn Glow. She's really starting to use this action of hers, and the filly's bounding away with the T-Rose. Autumn Glow remains unbeaten. Oh, the Autumn Glow winning three from three. And there's a very proud dad, the Autumn Sun, nodding. Uh, John Massara, what did you think of this third win in a row? Very excited about it because it emphatically showed that she's, I think, pretty special probably, you know? And James McDonald was very happy when he got very off. Very happy. He got off and he said, look, I think she's pretty special and uh, there was more there if I needed it. He just did enough to win. But if needed, he could have pushed harder and got further away from them. Well, let's go back to the up and coming because J Mac couldn't get the weights on yep. that one. Uh, what do you think of that win, the second Again, one? Again, that was a good win in group company. Mm. Second race in your life to run in a group three was obviously a, a difficult assignment. But she did it again, and she did it against Colts as well. Autumn Glow at the 100, charging away now the up-and-coming stakes. And she remains unbeaten. Autumn Glow extended away. I think that was the first filly ever to win the up-and-coming, by the way. But, uh, look, she's she's met every hurdle. She's jumped over every hurdle, clearly. And uh, we're heading for bigger things, I think. When did you know that, hey, this filly is out of the out of the box? Because she only raced, obviously, she's only raced as a three-year-old. Well, she trialled a couple of times and trialled very impressively, but trials are trials and race conditions are different. So until you actually see it on race day and see her handle the day, the parade, all those things, it's difficult to say. But now we've seen her, uh, I'm confident that she's going to go on to bigger and better things, I think. Next week, the flight stakes. What do you think? We don't know the, we don't know the makeup of the field, but this is Group 1. It's Group 1. It's like the guineas for fillies in New South Wales. It's like the 1,000 guineas in Victoria. The flight stakes is the equivalent here. Um, I don't think she'll meet any different fillies. I think it's the ones that she met last week uh, in the T-Rose. So, provided her form maintains, I think she'll be very competitive again. Autumn Sun won the Guineas, or I think it was the Rose Hill Guineas by a nose, and you could only drink a cup of tea and you had to go to sleep. You couldn't go out and party because your heart was pumping oh, yeah. too much. Yeah. Where, where does this uh, filly take you to? Yeah, she takes me to great heights because I'm so proud of her because she's a daughter of this guy. And I've got a lot of faith in this guy. We bred him, we sold him as a yearling, we brought back into him as a stallion, and now he's doing this. So I'm, I'm so proud of what he's doing. and. Uh, and so we, I, it's an added thrill to have a daughter like that of his. She's very like her dad, the Autumn Sun, who we trained. And it's great to be able to see similar sort of similarities between father and daughter. Uh, we knew how good he was. We knew what it took for him to win races. And we get a little bit of confidence out of that. So she's very uh, cool, relaxed filly, great ath athlete. She's um, yeah, got a beautiful uh, swag about her and walk and she does that at speed as well so she's picture perfect um, and she's got the speed and obviously doing it on the racetrack as well he was very special the father as, as an athlete so if she's as good as the old man be more than happy <laughs> so flight stakes and into the paddock for a while yeah. back for the autumn is that what you would that's the plan yeah and in terms of what we, we chase in the autumn there are some lovely fillies races if we want to go that direction or we could 
chance our hand against some of the Colts in some of the better open races. So we'll wait and see. See how she develops and furnishes out. The great horses, you think of Winx, you think of Black Caviar, you, you think of really different horses and it takes the industry to another level. Yeah, it, it, it is good. It's, uh, but the funny thing about it is that you think you won the race, but you've had nothing to do with it. We won that race. It's not you, it's the horse that's won the race, but you identify with the animal. Uh, so it's, it's a funny feeling, uh, but it is a great way to promote the farm, the stallion, uh, the horse racing uh, sport. Yeah, and uh, it's a beautiful People globe. love great horses. Welcome back to Racing Dreams. Well, here we are at Coolmore in Jerry's Plains. Absolutely picture postcard perfect day. And I'm joined by Tom Magna. How are you, Tom? Morning, Tim. How are you? Very good. Storm Boy Golden Rose. Uh, obviously, you've gone through the video a thousand times. What do you think? I'd be very happy with where the horse is at. Uh, I spoke to Gay Waterhouse this morning and Adrian. They're extremely happy with Storm Boy. Obviously, uh, I've watched the race the last day a lot and I think if he came out of the barriers better, uh, he would have been very hard to beat. Um, so, you know, he was an amazing two-year-old and yeah, I uh, wouldn't, wouldn't change him front in the Golden Rose. But um, yeah, hopefully we just get that bit of luck that we need. Absolutely. Well, uh, of course, you're talking about the run to the Rose and he came third in that, but uh, he burst back into the spring, didn't he, with that good win in the San Domenico? Yeah, he did. He, um, he was spelling on the farm there for a couple of weeks and, wow, he's just a, such a powerful horse. Um, you know, he, he puts your jaw to the ground every time you see him. And, uh, yeah, he spelled well and he went back to gaze and, yeah, he came out so so good he put the the critics to sleep and you know i was very happy with the, the the run and the run to the rose as i said he just missed the break and um hopefully the, we get as i said we get the luck back on uh, golden rose day if he performs well in the golden rose you have your own slot in the everest do you say storm boys our horse for the everest is that what you do you'd kind of wait and see how the horse pulls up um listen to the trainers you know there has been some talk of what distance is best suited for Storm Boy, but I think we'll, we'll see how he runs at the weekend. But if, if he if he runs very well and he, he shows what we think is there, he'd, he'd be the obvious choice for us for the Everest. He's the perfect script if he does well, goes into the Everest, he'd have autumn next year and then he'd spend the rest of his life up here? Well, you sort of, that's, that's the long term mm. plan obviously. Um, but these are racehorses and things change. So we'll, we'll take it day by day, but at the moment we're very happy with him. Um, you know, he's just, we're delighted to be involved in him and the partners that we have uh, in Stone Boy, they're, they're a great group of people and they're just really enjoying the ride. And the Roman Consul for Switzerland? Yeah, uh, the plan is for Switzerland to go there. Um, I think we put a line through uh, his run the last day. Chris has always had a very high opinion of this horse uh, and has James. And yeah, we, um, we think that he'll, he'll suit the Roman Consul and I'm really hoping that people get to see the horse that we've been getting very positive feedback uh, over the last, uh, last couple of months. Uh, he's a gorgeous horse and uh, the team at Wallers have a very high opinion of this horse. So let's see what happens. You're coming home hard, King's Gambit, but Shinzo and Ryan Moore are drawn clear to win the Golden Slipper. Golden Slipper winner Shinzo standing here. How's that all going? Oh, he's fantastic. He looks great. We're very lucky that some of the, if not all, the best breeders in the country are using him. Uh, obviously, you know, we're a couple of weeks into the breeding season now and we start to get see the scanning. And his scanning is very good. He's very fertile and uh, he's very good at his new job.
What's your view of the Sydney Spring, Tom? Um, we used to pull the curtains down at Epsom uh, Day and, and now it runs all the way through to November. That's incredible, really. Um, just delighted to be part of it. Like, look, I'm very fortunate I get to go racing um, all over the world. You know, Breeders' Cups in America, you know, Ascot, Arc de Triomphs. You, you can't beat the buzz that's here. You know, the build-up to the spring uh, every year in Australia just gets better and better and it gets bigger and bigger. And the crowds that we get to see at the races is, you just don't see that anywhere else in the world. And it's a credit to all those involved. I can just see you in the mosh pit over a stay. Well, he's asleep somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Not having had a drink just because I was old and tired. That's what the story would be. That was yeah. a lovely story mm. at Coolmore. Um, it's a beautiful property out there and a lovely story. Uh, speaking of lovely stories, our next guest is always a great story, always a great chat. Always lovely to see you, James Harron. Good morning. Keeping the, cam keeping the shamrock ever present. How are you? <laughs> Very well, Tim. Morning, Julie. Good morning. Um, big day of racing today. A little bit of rain around Sydney. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, well, look, it's uh, a little bit unfortunate. We had a, a horse that we've got a, a big opinion of called Bodyguard, uh, who was going to line up in the Heritage Stakes, but it's just just a little bit wet from this morning, so we'll have to keep for another day. He'll um, he'll run next week in the Dan Hill at Flemington. Okay. Um, so we've had to divert from today, but look, I'm. Um, I think we're lucky, given the rain we had. Uh, the track was obviously pretty dry, and it's it's come up a seven, and, and hopefully they get a bit of an improving track through the day. Well, just quickly on bodyguard before we move on, uh, because Peter Snowden has come out and said that he doesn't think he's seen a better athlete as a horse. Uh, if he does do well in the Dane Hill, you do have a slot in the Everest. Is that the way you go? Do you put bodyguard in? Yeah, I suppose this morning was quite crucial, Tim, because um, ideally we were going to use uh, today's race um, to guide us uh, forward in his preparation. And, um, you know, just going a week further down the track and a trip to Melbourne, um, you know, it really makes that, that quite difficult uh, and gives us um, quite a bit to think about. So not ideal, but uh, that's the business we're in. We've got to think on our feet and you've got to move move and shake a little bit and, uh, and, and most importantly uh, make sure the horses are in the right races to, to do their best. Move and shake, you've almost got a giga kick, don't you? So <laughs> what do you think of that trial? You've already won an Everest with giga kick. Obviously it's he's in the frame. We, we couldn't have planned that segue better, could we? Um, <laughs> no. He, he's, you know, firstly it's just wonderful to see him back. Obviously he had a, injured himself, he was off the scene for a long time and um, I think hats off to young Clayton Douglas for for getting him back and and back to the races and I'm looking I'm looking very well. I think uh, we can see that progression from just his jump outs, his trials, his first start right through to the trial that you played earlier at Canterbury. He was uh, he was super. So um, I think he's trending the right way and uh, it's great to see him back in great health. James, you're no stranger to making a last-minute Everest call and that last-minute call paying off. You have won this race before. Are there others? We've, we've talked about Giga Kick. We've talked about Bodyguard. Are there others out there at the moment that have caught your eye? Yeah, Julie, it's, um, I think it's going to be one of the most competitive mm. Everest in, since its inception. Um, you know, I say that probably the average SP on the winners has been about 10 to one, but I mean, we're looking at, I, I mean, I, I think you mentioned earlier and you know, there's six runners in the field and you could make a case for any six of them. And there's another handful that I think are in the same boat. There's a lot of even form lines. Um, are we going to see a couple of three-year-olds, which, which might bring in that little bit of X factor and that little bit of a, uh, you know, a different form line with the, with the weight allowance we've seen at work. Uh, very effectively over the last few years. So, um, you know, we're, we're really um, knuckling down into our thought process. Um, there's a lot of different ways um, to do the, to fill the slot and, and to go about 
uh, entering the race and, and we've just got to look at our options now. Not easy either, is it? It's a, not an easy one. It's an equation which is, uh, you know, it, there's no set rules on the equation of how to get it right every time. Now, let's have a look at Fearless because, uh, look, uh, fair to say he's going to be an outsider in the Golden Rose today with, uh, you know, the two Godolphin horses and Storm Boy, but he's there. Yeah, look, Tim, he's, um, he's a horse that's sort of been there or thereabouts. Um, he's put in a couple of really scintillating runs from without getting much luck. Uh, he was super in the Blue Diamond. Um, he came back and trialed very, very well, and probably a little bit disappointed with his first up run. Thought he could have finished that a little bit better, but he was off one trial. It was 1,200 metres. Um, he's second up now. He's had... A nice little few weeks in between runs. He gets out to fourteen hundred, which is is what we believe probably is, you know, as good a peak distance. Um, so I think we're going to learn a lot more today uh, about Fearless and just see how he performs and and where we map out the rest of his preparation from here. But he's extremely well. Peter Snowden's got him in fine fettle. I saw him during the week, and I think he'll, uh, with all you know, with even luck, he'll run his best race, and we'll, we'll see where that fits in. Just before we let you go, James, earlier in the week, of course, we saw the latest crop of Sydney two-year-olds unveiled at the first official two-year-old trials. I know you love that day. Uh, three colts for the James Heron Bloodstock Colt Partnership and a filly as well. Who was the standout for you? Yeah, it's a wonderful day. It's obviously, um, you know, a lot of anticipation in the first season stallions. We will go forward with two colts in the next week, um, one called Gambler and the other one called Valedictorian. Um, Valedictorian missed the break a little bit, didn't, didn't quite get an opportunity to show off what we've been seeing at home. So we will, um, we will still go towards the races. He'll be nominated for the, both of them will be nominated for the Breeders' Plate in Sydney and the Marbelong Trial in Melbourne. And we'll um, probably split them up. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing, seeing what they've got under race day pressure. Good on you, James. You're dressed, ready to go. We'll see you out at Rose Hill Gardens. Look forward to it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, James. Stay with us. We still have plenty more to come on Racing Dreams. We're going to take a look at our weekly tipping comp. We might oh, skip over that quite quickly, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll skip that. Stay with us. You're watching Racing Dreams. Who's winning? Who's <laughs> Great to have your company on Racing Dreams. Now, one of the hardest competitions in the world, of course, to be anywhere near the top would be the tipping comp that we run here, Julie. You all of a sudden have a lot of enthusiasm, Tim. Um, good morning to Racing Dreams. Racing Dreams. <laughs> racing New South Wales. Mark Brassel. I'm trying not to look at Tim. Mark Brassel, good morning. Welcome into the good. studio. It's love to have a fair, lovely to have a fair competitor in the studio. <laughs> Yeah, good morning. Listen to those words. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Good to see you, Mark. Yeah, good to see you guys. Uh, I mean, Shano, let's yes. not forget Shano. Yeah, a hat Daily trick. Telegraph, Shano. Absolute no. hat trick, three in a row, good prices. Good on you, Shano. Thanks Running so much, second. Rash. Tim's in front, streaking away, but I've got a solution. I've got a solution. Yeah, what's your solution? I think, as a reward, we give both you guys a week off. Don't tip this week, and then the stragglers can That's catch nice. up. How about I don't that? want any prize. I, I don't want. I, no, I'm too humble for that. I don't need any prizes. I'll, I'll keep cracking away. I'll keep whacking away at it. Now, Shane, yep. who are you going for today? Well, I like one in the first. I'm going to kick off early. Race one, number 12. It's a filly or now a mare called Unique Ambition, trained by John Sargent. Uh, he gave her the little Queensland Oaks uh, uh, expedition uh, during the winter. She's had a little sneaky trial, uh, followed the field around. Look, I, I will note, she raced in some pretty good races during the um, during the autumn. Sarge gave her a, um, a little bit of a test against some of these good fillies. And you can see her there, she's right on the outside, running uh, just with about two or three behind her. And um, she finishes off very, very well here in what was you know extremely high company for what she was at this same stage but I think she's improved she's fully mature now and this is a midway uh, not an Oaks not a flight stakes not a T Rose she's got Blake Shin on and I will just say one last thing Blake Shin is the leading jockey in Australia by numbers of wins so he's a man in form Wow. Okay, now I'm going to go for a very high profile horse today Storm Boy uh, look missed the start last time and finished third I thought that was a fantastic effort to actually finish third after the start. Um, won very impressively in the San Domenico first up. That was second up. I think he's, uh, he's going to be hardened for this one. Third up, sticky gate, but I'm just going to go with Storm Boy 
to win the Golden Rose. What about you, Mark? I'm going for Amelia's Jewel in the Golden mm. Pendant, race Jewel seven, I think it is, yeah. Look, uh, this is a very, very good mare. If you watch this replay here, she's back there running about sixth with the red cap, red sleeves, white armbands. She'll wind up. Now, today she goes back to uh, Mare's class. She hasn't, hasn't won a race for a year, granted, but she has raced in top-level you know, Group 1s everywhere. Uh, a lot of people concerned about the wet track. I mean, she's had one go on a soft five in um, the Quokka, $4 million race in WA. Steamed home from last, got beaten a nose. So I've got no yeah, concerns whatsoever. Uh, I think this is a race she's going to have to step up because she's entered for the, the King Charles, the Epsom next week, mm. whether she backs up for that. But I think this is a race today. $2.70, so people are liking it. Julie? I am with the grey. I'm with Celestial Legend today uh, in the Shannon Stakes over the 1500. We're going to watch the replay of the Doncaster, if I recall correctly. He comes off the 1300 in the Theo Marks, steps up to the 1500, doesn't mind a little bit of give in the ground. Um, I think he, this track will sort of work with him today. Uh, he won the Hobartville on a soft six and the Doncaster, of course, on a heavy eight. So I'm with the grey. My heart has always been with the grey. I'm with Celestial Legend um, and, of course, Les Bridge. Got a soft spot for Les. Yeah, Les is a great man. Now let's have a look at uh, who else is going where. Kirsten Duke from Sky Racing has chosen... Is this, would you call this Porgy Power or is that... Powie? Powie Power? Powie Power. 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 Race, num race one, number two in Canberra. Yeah. Today. And um, then uh, Julianne's gone uh, to Kembla, <coughs> where she works, of course, Tembury uh, Wells. And uh, who else do we have? Nick there? Burney from Racing New South Wales is on the last race at Rose Hill today. Ferrari. Ferrari. And Jared Croker is tipping Traffic Warden in the Golden Rose. I think. Look, let's just really skip over this next graphic. It's the leaderboard. We <laughs> no, don't need to no, hover no, on it. No, no, we've got to get the program done um, properly. Here it is. There it is, the leaders board. Um... Oh, I think we need to talk to the stewards about this. I'm just not understanding <laughs> how you are so far ahead. Going for a hat trick. <laughs> I can't see what I can't understand. I, I, I know exactly why. I'm a dead set genius. Um, <laughs> but that could all change today. I'm a dead set genius. <laughs> There's a storm coming. <laughs> that, could, that could change today. Oh, all oh, right. Shane, uh, let's chat to you quickly about today's racing. The Golden Rose, what a strong field we've got for this one today. Who are you liking? Well, look, I'm, I'm with broadsiding. Uh, I, I will know no horses won the Golden Rose first up, but not too many horses have tried in the past, and this has been a plan from James Cummings for uh, for the whole campaign. I mean, admittedly, um, we, we have to say this horse was in Queensland not that long ago, so it's not like he's had that much uh, of a spell. Uh, he's had exhibition gallops, barrier trials, and the thing about him, Julie, th that separates him from the others is his burst of acceleration is just incredible. He reminds me a lot of Animo, maybe even the Autumn Sun as well. Uh, we mm -hmm. can see him here winning just coming from off the pace and uh, he, he just lets down so well. James McDonald's ridden this horse three times for three wins. I guess the only little, perhaps the fly in the ointment is barrier one. Whether that's an advantage to him, I don't know. But we all know James McDonald's doesn't make mistakes. He's known he's drawn barrier one since uh, Tuesday. So I, I'm sure all the contingencies have been drawn up to uh, work out where this horse is going to be best suited in the run. But I will say he does have a lot of competition from uh, particularly Storm Boy. Mm. He's the X factor of Sydney racing. I mean, he hasn't really delivered yet uh, to to be fair, but uh, he has had excuses every time he's lost a race, I feel. And um, interesting listening to you talking with uh, Tom Magnier there. There's still a lot of uh, confidence in the camp. He was very unlucky last start. Had he have not, you know, been slow out, had to be ridden up, he would have nearly won that race. So, uh, yeah, it's Storm Boy v Broadsiding. I'm Broadsiding. Golden Pendant? Golden Pendant. Uh, Amelia's jewel, uh, as Brass pointed out there, we'll, uh, you know, he thinks she'll handle the wet track. It's a soft seven. Hopefully it will improve a little bit so uh, we get to see the best of her. But she's got uh, Samana to come up against who was an absolute mudlark, good across all surfaces. It looks like a race in two. Uh, two good mares coming together. Um, and just quickly, only two minutes left on the show. The Manicato last night, I wish I win, came in third. Uh, a strong finish there from the Kieran Ma trained as well. Uh, what did you make? I thought he was absolutely unbelievable. He's raced at Mooney Valley twice in his last two starts. He is not a Mooney Valley horse. He is a Randwick horse. And as soon as he gets to the Everest, we're going to see this horse absolutely peak. Uh, he's $5 favourite and not many people are talking about him, but mm -hmm. gee whiz. I mean, he, he's been losing and has been the best horse in both races that he's been beaten in. 
Okay, well, that, uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens going forward with a few of the horses uh, this week with the Everest because today is pivotal, pardon me, mm. And it is a soft seven, as you mentioned, was a heavy eight last night into a soft seven this morning. That does give you the, the chance with a little bit of sunshine that we could get to a soft six. So uh, that's a pretty good surface. Yeah, look, I think uh, it's, it's, it's good for Rose Hill to have um, a little bit of sting uh, out of the ground because we've had some very fast tracks lately in Sydney, particularly at Randwick. And, um, look, it doesn't help for horses that are out the back trying to make ground when they're running sort of world record time. So I think the track will play perfect today. And, uh, you know, it's sunny enough. We could get a little upgrade, but I'd say it'll be playing really, really well today. All right, OK. Mark, is it the Swans today? By 16. Funny you ask. I know you're a Swans man. Swans <laughs> by 16. 16. No, we're by 16. <laughs> I'm very confident. Yeah, Shane, who's Swan, Swans or Brisbane? Oh, Swans. Uh, Swans. Uh, Brass knows more about the Swans than I do, but uh, they're a pretty good team. They've the best, been the best team all year. They've deserved to win. Yeah. Go the Swannies. I know. I, I, Our I, producers are Queenslander. My heart says the Swans. My head says Brisbane. I, I, yeah, anyway, mm. may the best team win. And yeah. Panthers, Panthers, Panthers tonight. Oh, oh. Absolutely. <laughs> By the length of the straight, they won't, <laughs> they won't need to get out the persuader there. They are outstanding Penrith. So Penrith, Melbourne grand final. I think that's the way it's going to be. That is the way it's going to be. Uh, lovely to sh see you, gents. Thank you very much. Thank you for your company. Thank you to Racing New South Wales. Thank you to Arrowfield. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Julie. We'll see you next week here on Racing Dreams <laughs> where I lead the tipping comp a long, long way. Have a Goodbye. good day. Have a good day. <laughs>